Hi, this is DT Bonnie, and um, we're going to be working on, this is the first part of the project. As you saw to begin with, what we're going to be creating um, was at the beginning of the video. And this is the first part of what we're going to be doing. What we need to do, like I usually do for the beginning of a lot of my um, cards, is I use um, Puma Stone, or I use a light um, ink, and I also use a um, blending brush. And I always, um, I spray them, mist it with a little bit of water. And then I just rub the, um, I just rub the um, Puma Stone over the tops of these. I just like to have a little bit of color as opposed to having a stark white card. Again, you can use um, any type of cardstock that you want, or you can use a watercolor paper. This um, paper will, um, because it's got a little bit of water in it, will buckle up just a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to complete this entire part and then we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, so you want to let that dry. Once that has dried, you are going to need a, a heart stencil. And you can make your own. Just This is just regular paper. And all I did was, um, I actually used my Cricut and I cut out this um, heart. Um, just to give you an idea, this heart is about, let's see here, it is about uh, th about three inches and three and a half inches wide. So three inches long, about three inches long and three inches wide. So the next thing you do is you got to set this up and the best way to do that is to use some um, tape, tape that down to a paper if you want to, or you can tape it down to the um, work surface that you're on. And then the next thing you're going to do is um, tape this down. Oh, actually what I did first, because I cut my, I cut this bigger than what I needed it to be. And so I actually washi taped this to my paper stencil. I forgot. And then I flipped that over. And what I used for the inside of this heart is Distress Oxide um, Sponge Sugar. And I did the same concept with that, is I did mist my, um, my blending brush, and I, like I said, I used Sponge Sugar. And then what I did was I carefully um, just went inside and, and just did like you normally would for a stencil. Doesn't need to be really heavy or anything, just I want a light coating. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. Now if you have a different, you have something different you wanna use, but this paper, it's just regular paper and it just worked fine for a stencil. And you don't want to rub too hard with if it's um, water, because I put a little bit of water. All right, that should do it. So then if you want to see what that looks like, now you have your heart. And that's what we were going for. The next step is I use Lavinia Stamps stencil, and that stencil is... I got some tape all over it, just a second. Let's check it out. That one is Ivy, ST007. And the reason I went with the Ivy is because to me those look like hearts. And I thought that went really well with the heart that we're working on. So the next step is, remember the cutout that we did, you save that, because now I'm gonna use it as a mask. So I'm gonna set that down on top and keep that as steady as I can. And then I'm gonna put the stencil on top of that. I'm gonna straighten that stencil up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of washi tape so I can keep that heart in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tape the stencil down. I am gonna grab a little bit more washi tape to keep the space underneath down also. And you can really um, 
just add just a little bit to the edge because that won't get too much into your, see I have this piece right here. Try to get that so it won't mess up your, whoops, stencil. But that will keep it in place. Now what you do is you pull out your pumice stone again and, be, and because you're putting a second layer, it'll give like a shadow. So all you do is you're gonna take your, um, your blending brush again. And I think I have the, I need to get the other one. Well, I think this will work. Okay, and I don't use water for this one at all. I do not miss, I do not miss the blending brush at all. And I'm just gonna come in there and, and swirl and put some of the ink back down on top. Now I'm gonna lift this up just to give you an idea of what that looks like. So it's not very, I, I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be really, really bold. And I'm gonna go all the way around and being careful with this stencil that it doesn't lift up. Get some of my things in the way here. And I'm gonna take a peek and make sure that I have it um, enough of the ink in all the places. Cause sometimes um, I don't make, I, I've i missed some spots and you can just check it by lifting this up. All right. Now I've done another video um, already showing how to do something like this, but this was our heart version and I thought with um, Valentine's Day coming up, this will be a good, easy card for you to make. Let's check our, let's have a little peek and see how we did. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. Let's check down here. Yep, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off so I can show you the, what this looks like. So that's the look we're going for. All right, and then the next step is gonna be, um, we're gonna be painting inside of the heart using the Distress Oxide ink. Okay, so our next step is going to be um, technically water painting or water coloring on top of our um, stenciled heart. So what I did was I picked out four colors. I picked out um, two darks, or not really dark, but two darks and two um, lighter. So I don't know, I'll just show you what I mean. Like I used a dusty Concord and I used a shaded lilac. So this was a darker and a lighter color. And then, so that you know you can do different colors and if you don't have the Distress Oxide. And then I use the pink uh, raspberry and the worn lipstick. So, as you can see from looking at my example, I did the darker on the outside and then blended in. So yes, um, I also use water. I'm going to go ahead and spray these on my mat. So I have a little bit of water to use. And I'm gonna be using um, a thicker brush and I'm going to be applying this just like paint. So it, it, each one will be different because it's it's really not a set um, style. It's kind of like just painting like uh, around the inside of this. So um, this is like I said, the darker color and I'm just going around the outside. And this was the dusty Concord. And again, I'm just kind of like using my whatever you want to do. And you add a little bit more water if you want it to be a little bit more fluid. So that's just kind of like, see, it's not really fancy or anything. You just do it just a little bit like that. And then you're going to go to your next color of the um, purple, and that is the shaded lilac. And I'm just going to come back in there and start blending that out. Well, remember, we're just working on, I'm just working on cardstock right now, but if you have a water um, color paper, this even works even better for you to blend and not add too much water. And 
And like I said, each one will be different depending on how you decide you want to paint. Some people have a lot more talent at um, doing watercoloring. But just keep in mind um, the lighter and the darker and how you can blend that out. And the more water you add to your ink over here, um, it won't be as dark either. So now I'm going to be going with the um, Peaked Raspberry and just kind of like adding some more to that, blending it in. And like I said, if you think this is a little bit too dark for what you want to do, just um, add more water to your ink on your palette and it won't be as dark. Now, another thing I do is I just come in with water too to, on top of this to blend it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on here. I'm gonna start doing some, a little bit blending. And like not a lot of water again, because I'm using water or just regular card stuff. Like I said, if you start out with not as much, with more water in your ink, it, you won't have to be doing as much of this adding some water. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in there with the um, worn lipstick. I think I'm going to add a little bit more water to that one. And I'm just going to go over this right up to the edge of what I stenciled. I don't know if you can see on, on the camera, but it is raising some of the fibers up of the... Um, cardstock and that's okay because it'll go back it'll be I can brush it off and this is also raised you can see that I'm sure on there and as it dries it goes back down because I did this exact same thing on the other one and you can see how that is as flat. So then what you do the next thing is after that you do this, you just have to let this dry completely. And that's pretty much the design we're gonna get with this one. I know a lot of you have done this before, doing the, um, you know, spraying. I just didn't want to waste the ink. And so I decided I'm just going to come in here and do some more sp spraying. And if you recall, um, there was the inside of that heart that we used for our mask. What I did with the first one is I just, you know, swirled that in there and I got another heart. So I'm going to save this for another project. But I just thought in case you didn't want this to be all um, ruined, just go through here just like that and you can make some... If you have a couple of cardstock pieces that you've cut out, you can just go ahead and do some smushing down there and get some really pretty different parts that you can use on your other projects. And they'll turn out really pretty. So I just wanted you to, to show you that if you didn't want to just wipe this up, you can use it for another project. So now we're going to be adding um, a stamp. You can add any stamp to this, whatever one you pick from your collection you think will look good. I'm gonna be using this stamp right here and it is called Moments Like These and it's LAV385. And I always like, um, I can't remember what the word is I use, but I always uh, put things down and check it out to see how it will look. 
on my um, card before I stamp it because these plastic um, acrylic sheets are very helpful to give you an idea as long as you know that you've got your your stamp the right way around I've put these um, the wrong way into my sleeve and then I pull them out and I go oh it doesn't go that way so anyway I decided I wanted her to be a little bit more grounded in that um, position so before I stamp her I am going to go ahead and use my paper that I've torn and just add a little bit of a hill and I am using Puma Stone um, because that's what I used in the background. I don't want it to be, um, I want it to be more subtle. I don't want it to be a really overpowering look. And I'm only just going to do this little bit right through here. Let's see. I just want enough so that you can really see it. Let's see. Let's check that out. I think that's gonna work pretty good. I think I'm gonna go the other way with it too. I'll give it going down the other direction a minute. Two things going two different ways, but that's okay. I'm gonna I should have known that was gonna happen, but that's okay because I can still make that work. I'm gonna come back in there and do that again a little bit darker. I really want it to go the other way. So let's go like that. See, sometimes I'm not 100% sure unless I practice before I do the video exactly what I want. And then when I check it out and decide I don't want it, figure out a way I can change it. And that's going to work. That's what I want. And then, whoops, she'll be sitting. Whoops, where's my example for you? And then she'll be sitting on that. That looks a lot better. Okay. So I know where I want her to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it, set her up like that and then set that down. Make sure her feet are in the right place and her bottom isn't up in the air. So she's sitting right there. I am going to be using um, VersaFine Clear Nocturne. Okay. You get her all stamped up. I haven't used her yet. I think she's a really pretty stamp. And I think it goes really well with the heart. And it doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. It just can be something showing some love. I'm pulling out those extra. I don't want that black to show up. I've had that happen before as you've seen in other videos. Looks good. It's really hard for me just to add one stamp to my project. I usually like to have several, but I just think that this might work. But if you feel the need to add a little bit more to your card besides just a stamp, I think that these flowers would look really pretty um, also on it. All right, let's see, I'm probably gonna have to stamp this twice. Yep. Now you're wondering why there's a little bit of white to her. Lots of times when you stamp on top of um, Distress Oxide, it doesn't soak in as great. Um, so you gotta give it a little bit more.
All right, so I'm gonna probably gonna go ahead and, and do a little bit more stamping on her, but I wanted you to see how she looks. When I'm finished and I put um, some clear embossing powder on, I'll show you again. Okay, so if you wanna do a little bit of an advanced technique, not that it's that big of a deal, you can set down a mask down below and you can go ahead and bring your stamp back in and you can stamp those flowers right there just like that. You just wanna make sure that your stamp down below um, does not go above this line. So if you wanna do something like that, you can, but see, I wanna make sure her head doesn't come up that far. But at the same time, I want, I want the stems of these to go to that, to be able to touch where I um, did that um, inking right there. So let's see if I can match that up a little bit better maybe. Yeah, that would be better. Okay, so you just match that line up underneath and then you set that about where you think you're gonna want that to go. And you're gonna want her head to be below that, you know, beyond that mask. You can figure that one out. So I can go ahead and pull my stamp. And you can clean this off if you're concerned about it, um, any other part of it showing. And you can just set that down on there the way you want it. Again, I gotta make sure her head stays below so it doesn't ink at all. It's, it's a little fussy, which is what I said, it's a little bit more advanced. And I'll make sure this piece stays in place. I'm gonna put another piece of tape on it. Okay. And I'm just gonna um, ink up the top part of that stamp where the flowers are in the stem and try not to get any ink on her head. And you can always wipe anything away too so it doesn't show. Okay, so that's how the flowers will go. That's only if you want to add a little bit of extra. Otherwise, it looks really good just by itself. I have to do a little bit more inking. And there's always, I always call this like a hiccup right there because that little bit of a bump um, doesn't always ink. And that's where you have to add your, your black markers. Let's take a look. So we'll probably add a little bit of a black marker right there. And that'll work. My only other option is if I wanna pull that down just a little bit and see if I can get that ink to show. Nope, so we're gonna add a little bit of a marker right there. And that's what we're gonna do. That's the look. Okay, one last step I'm gonna show you. I actually used a gel pen to fill in that little spot right there um, because I um, clear embossies are a little bit shiny, so if I use a gel pen, it matches up better with the clear embossing that I do. So I've pulled out three of my Prisma color pencils um, because I'm gonna go ahead and do her wings, and I wanted to match up as best I could with a heart. And um, just in case you wanna know, I am using hot pink, and that is 993. And I'm going to be using um, Parma Violet, which is uh, 1008. And I'm going to also be using Rose, which is 929. So I'm going to start with the darkest first, which is the purple. And I'm going to just um, color in these wings. 
And remember, because I added clear embossing powder, it won't color over my, um, my lines, my dark lines, stamped lines. So this is not, um, I don't make this really fussy. I just kind of like look and see where I need the shadow on the wing. And the next one, I'm gonna come in with the hot pink and start blending that in a little bit more. And then I'm going to be using the rose. I believe that, yep. And then I like to get this whole color to blend in a little bit better. So I usually pick a, a light color that will blend those in. And in this case, I think I'm gonna use because I want it to kind of go match with the um, background a little bit, I'm going to be using eggshell. And that, I'm just going to go back over everything I've already done and blend that in. It gives a little bit of a yellow cast, but that still works okay. And then because everybody likes shiny wings, sparkly wings. I am going to use a little bit of my, um, I have a little bit of this sparkly paint I'm gonna use this time. This is called, um, something I got a while ago, it's called um, Extreme um, Glitter, and it's Water Basin it's Hologram. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of that in the wings. It's like if you have anything that's shiny, um, I know there's a lot of things out there, the Nouveau drops, probably anything that you can paint in there to give a little bit of. And this is water-based too, so you have to be kind of careful with anything you have underneath that could react with the water. A little dot, don't want that there. It's hard to see glitter in um, videos anyway. But I just wanted you to see what I do to finish it off. Okay. You can, yep, you can see it if I tilt it. You can also see how that's shiny because I um, heat embossed it. So that's our look for our, um, our card for today. And then this will be put on top of a card and I'll show you what that looks like at the very beginning when you get, when you see. So there's other options you can use. I wanted to show you that though really quick. There's other options. I'm gonna make another card um, also. And I'm gonna be using this one. And this one is called Bria Rose and it's LAV355. And it'll look um, really nice on there too. So you have several options. Just think of all the different options you have. Um, here's our other one that we did earlier. And she would look lovely on there as well. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial today. Um, and don't forget to um, subscribe and like this video and come back and see what all the DT are making. We have something going on all week long. So um, I love it. I love for you to stop by. And don't forget that all of the products that I've used um, um, are, are listed below in my description and are available on the venueworld.com. And we also have um, two challenges for you to consider. One is called um, Anything Lavinia uh, Facebook group. And um, we have a, a um, it's every two weeks we have a new uh, challenge and you need to use anything um, with Lavinia stamps. We also have another challenge that is called Lavinia World. And um, you can use any stamped image for that challenge. And again, it's every two weeks. And the winner will get a $15 credit for the Lavinia World Store. So thanks for stopping by.